Welcome to section five, writing a Python replacement for Netcat. So we're going to look at a few things in this section. First of all, we have to talk about Netcat, what it is, what it's used for, etc. Otherwise, we won't be able to know what functionality we need to implement in our Python script that we will be using in place of Netcat. We've used a lot of input arguments in past scripts, but I thought it would be a good thing for us to go into more detail on how you would approach the process of writing input arguments for your program. And then we're also going to be taking a look at how to write a client server program in Python. And at its core, that's what Netcat is. So it's a really good exercise to try to rewrite Netcat in Python in order to learn how networking functionality works in Python. So in this first video, we're going to talk about the introduction to Netcat. So like I said, at its core, Netcat is capable of essentially being a server or a client with networking capabilities. It's able to listen to any TCP or UDP port as a server. It's also able to, as a client, connect to any TCP or UDP port. It's really, really useful for debugging and testing network applications. It's also really useful in penetration tests, for example, if you want to test if a particular port is open, or if you have successfully compromised a machine and you want to send a reverse shell, it can be used for that as well. So it's incredibly useful. A lot of people consider it to be a Swiss Army knife of uh, Linux networking. So let's take a look at how we might use it. Okay, so in this window over here, we're going to simply listen on any interface to port 8080. So the L flag means listen. We didn't specify an interface, so it's just going to listen to all interfaces. And we didn't specify a protocol, so by default, it will listen to TCP. Now, in this window, we're going to simply connect as a client to that server instance that's currently running. And now we're connected. So let's take a look at what happens when we actually type something in. You can see it immediately appears on the server side and vice versa. Until one of them breaks the connection with a control C. And then they both exit. So that's one very simple use case. As I mentioned in the bullet points in the previous slide, you can also use it to actually transfer files or even write logs, things like that. So we're going to start up the listener again. And this time, we're going to just test to see if that port 8080 is listening. It's actually the same command, except the Z flag specifies that we don't want to send any data. We just want to simply know if that port is open. And there you go. If I ran that again without the server being available, it returns nothing. And that means that it's not listening or accepting connections. Let's try one more example. So this time we're going to send a reverse shell. So let's walk through this. Bash is a a particular shell and the i flag means interactive and then we're the right arrow there and the ampersand is redirecting any output essentially to tcp on localhost port 8080 and then we're also redirecting zero which is standard in to that original destination as well. So let's try this out. And you can see we immediately get a shell on the server side. And we can do anything on that shell that we would as that user that we're logged in as. So that's some of the most common functionality for that Netcat is used for.